Welcome to the Research Success Series. Today's session is called How to Read Academic Literature. It may sound kind of like a funny title, but there is a method to how to read academic literature. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so you'll, you'll see what I'm going to be working with here. So you should see the library's website, tarleton.edu slash library. So as I mentioned, there is a method or strategy to reading academic literature. If you haven't done so yet, during your time at Tarleton, you will be having to work with a different type of literature than what most people interact with, mainly uh, scholarly journal articles. You will hear your professors a lot say, you need academic sources, scholarly sources, peer-reviewed sources. Um, so I'm going to show you quickly how to access those, mainly because that's probably the most common question we get in the library, besides what time does the coffee shop close, um, is how do I find those peer-reviewed sources? So I'm going to show you right on our homepage, this search box here. I'm just going to use some keywords here, psychological disorders. Now, your topic could be anything. And I'm not going to go into much detail of how to do searching. That's a different topic, so that's a very important one. But just the main thing you need to know is this magic box over here, scholarly peer-reviewed journals. That answers the most common question we get. <laughs> now everything you see should theoretically be filtered by that, which is considered scholarly, has gone through the peer review process. But today's topic is how to read, how to read academic literature. How, how, how are you going to work with those journal articles that you find? So here's a simple search on psychological disorders. And while we're still searching for the articles, um, you know, some things might jump out at you. As you're trying to filter through, sift through your results to use the articles that most, you know, go along with your topic or what you need, your eyes is going to glance at the topics, of course. You know, the title of the article obviously should hopefully be a dead giveaway of what it's about, but there is a difference between the title of an article and the actual thesis statement or research question that is being pursued. And that's the thing that we really need to investigate and pay attention to as we're reading academic literature. In our database searching here, and this is pretty uniform throughout many databases that you'd be using, the subjects that the article discusses will be listed here. If you click on the title of the journal article, it'll provide the abstract for you. We'll, in a minute, talk a little bit more about that and some other information about the article itself. And a really cool trick that a lot of people love is if you click cite here, there it is. You can, you know, copy and paste your citation there and APA, Chicago, MLA, all, all, all the different ones. But how to actually read the article, that's what we care about today. For this one here, I'm just going to open the PDF full text. And at any time, if anybody has a question, go ahead and interrupt me. I don't mind. I'm not the best at noticing chat or anything. Go ahead and interrupt me if you have a question. Tell me to repeat something. Slow down if you need. Totally fine. But anyway, we've, we've opened up an academic article. And when you first started to learn how to read you know, as a child, it's these you know, little children's stories, board books or something. And the method that you learned to read, you carried through all the way into adulthood. You have a book in your hands, you look at the front cover, you go cover to cover, start to finish, word for word. That's how we read. And oftentimes people have a difficult adjustment to academic work because that's how we read. And oftentimes you'll be assigned something like read a journal article. And if you sit down to read front to back, word for word, cover to cover. You can do that, but that's not exactly how journal articles are even designed to be read. What we want to do as readers is kind of follow the same or similar pattern that the writer had when they were writing the article. And so what you're going to want to do, so here's this article that we opened up. It's in the, you know, it's a psych, it's a psych article here. Addressing Stigmatization of Psychological Disorders and in Introductory Psychology. So what is this article about? It's kind of a wordy title. It does get to the point of it, but 
if an article has an abstract, that's what you're going to read first. Just take a minute to read an abstract. What that is, is it's a paragraph summary about what the article is about. It's not the well-developed introduction body and conclusion, but it gives you a snapshot of what you're going to find in the article. In fact, abstract reading is very helpful when you're trying to sift through, through your results. If you need to use 10 sources in your paper, and this database is you know, giving you 2,000, narrow it down with searching strategies, and just kind of read the abstract of each article before you decide, do I want to invest more time in reading through this article or not? You'll get a good idea on if this article is actually addressing what it is you're looking for. If not, you say, okay, I'll go back to my list and try something else. But read the abstract first. You'll get a good snapshot overview of what the article is about. You may have heard somebody tell you this. I think this is a very good idea. What you're gonna do is you're gonna scroll down to the bottom of the article. This is a pretty short article, so I'm using it as an example because it's pretty easy to work with. I'm gonna scroll down straight to the conclusion. Basically what I'm doing when reading academic articles is I'm reading backwards. I'm not gonna sit down, start to finish, word for word, read it through. That's not even really how it's designed to be read. You know, they have these subject headings, which your eye can just jump straight to the things that you need to see. If I'm most interested in the stigma that is often, you know, accompanies psychological disorders because of the danger that's supposedly presented, I'm just going to jump straight to that and ingest that information. Now I'm going to read the conclusion first because that's going to tell me where these authors went to the main points of what they're arguing. I'm not even going to read the argument yet. I just want to know what they're saying. After I read the conclusion, I'm actually going to jump back up to the introduction. Because when you're writing a journal article or a paper, you may have found this already, you should actually write the introduction last. After you make all your arguments and you summarize them, the last thing you're going to do is write your introduction because you already know where you're going and where you've gone with your argumentation, which quite possibly will shift and change as you write. Have you ever written a paper and as you're writing or towards the end of it, you're like, well, actually now I've even changed my own mind. Your arguments will shift and the organization of them will as you write. So that's why you're writing the introduction last because it's going to give a faithful representation of where you're gonna take your reader. Basically, a paper or an article is structured this way. Okay, introduction, body, conclusion. What that is, is what you're going to tell your reader in the introduction, what you're telling your reader in the body, and what you've told your reader in the conclusion. <laughs> so when I write a paper, I'm thinking, here's what I'm gonna tell you, Here's what I'm telling you. Here's what I told you. That, in my mind, that does make perfect sense. You're, you're, you're just really getting to the point, straightforward with it. You're reiterating it in the conclusion. And in the introduction, you're just telling your reader where you're going to go. And that's why you write the introduction last. And so it may not even be the best thing to read first. Now, again, as I say all these things, you can sit down with an article, start to finish, read it all. In fact, I still default to that. It's how we learn to read when we read fiction and novels. And I still default to that. There's something therapeutic almost, just sitting there reading through a whole thing. When I was a student, I started to feel a bit guilty when I had these assignments of, you know, read these articles. And I had to make some statement like, yes, I read all of the assigned reading with a faithful attempt or whatever. I did feel a little guilty because I'm trying to read for speed and I have thousands of pages I have to do. And I talked to my professor about it one day and he said, we don't even expect you to read every single word. Read for comprehension. Soon after that, I was assigned to read a book called How to Read a Book. It was written in 1940. <laughs> it was kind of a funny title, but it was very helpful because it was all about how to strategically read for comprehension. Not necessarily word for word. The book also goes into how to read different genres, history, poetry, technical literature. They all have different approaches to them. 
So academic literature here, you need to be conversant with, you know, what the arguments are. So you need to understand the abstract, basically what the article is going to be about, the conclusion, the main points that the authors have stated, the introduction, where they're going to take you. Did they even do a good job with that? You'll pick up on that. If the conclusion in the introduction doesn't quite line up, which you will see out there from time to time, then the authors probably didn't even really do a good job with that. But if they kind of line up, you'll even better understand the research question or the thesis statement. And then what you're going to do is dissect the body with whatever you need. Maybe all of this is good information and you will take your time with each paragraph or whatnot. Or you just jump to the, the specific things that you're looking to get out of that article. Because remember, before we even opened this article, we saw the topics that they were trying to cover. And sometimes you'll have more. This is, this is just a handful. Sometimes you'll have you know, 30 things listed here. It gives you an idea of what they're going to talk about. Let's open another one here. Um, this one. This one has a lot of authors. And here's the publisher's website that they have the website text version. But I'm going to open up the PDF because this is how we'll see it in the actual journal. Here's the title, all the authors. Here's the abstract. If an article doesn't have an abstract, you know, conclusion, introduction, body, still like as you normally would. This one is laid out pretty well. There's the intro. There's a definitions section. You might not even read this at all unless you're going along and then you come to a term that how are they using that? You jump back up. You know, you use you read a journal article like this is a reference work. Um, you don't have to read every part of it, but it's there for your reference if you need to jump back up to it. A lot of different headings and subheadings in this. If you're looking for something specific, maybe in this given topic, I'm just mostly interested in the framework that the author has used in their study. So I'm going to read that and maybe really get a lot out of that and then move on to another article and not feel guilty that I didn't read the whole thing, but I got the framework of how they did their study. Now, yeah, it's helpful to know everything else in the article, of course, to understand the authors as best as we can. And the more you read from an article, the more you understand what it is, you know, the better you can back up the statements you make while quoting those authors. So yeah, invest the time and effort into a good journal article. But this is, as you can see, this is a long article. And there might be most of this information that I won't need in my work. That's okay. I'm just, you know, cherry picking in a good way what, what they're saying and what I want to use. And there's some, you know, tables and charts in here. So you're not going to just read this start to finish probably word for word. I'm going to jump down to the conclusions and future perspectives, however they lay it out, intro, body. And the references. This is just kind of a helpful tip of how to build your bibliography. If you're assigned to do a paper and you need 30 sources or whatnot, and you're overwhelmed, you've found 10 good ones, like, where do I find more? As you're reading academic literature, look to see who they're quoting. There's a lot of sources in this one. There are so many sources in this one that I'm kind of suspecting they probably didn't interact deeply with a lot of these. It might be like, oh, we found a study written by these 12 authors and they're just, you know, citing every one of them. But, you know, this, this is a list of a lot of different sources that apparently are making these arguments. And as you find them in the body of the article, you can go down and chase down one of these sources, see what they're saying. That might be another great source for you. That's not cheating at all. That's not plagiarism. It, that's good research. Following the references that the authors are providing for you. In fact, that's why they provide them, so you can follow their research. When you learn how to read strategically or read for comprehension, I think a lot of people kind of describe it as like I'm cheating. It's like cheating reading, so to speak, because again, we're used to just reading novels front to back. We don't even want to jump to the end because that spoils it for us. But here in an academic journal article, you're gonna be jumping all over the place just drawing from it what you need and not wasting time, so to speak, if there's a lot that's being discussed in certain sections that's not really applicable to what you're doing. Any questions at all 
And does this make sense? I hope it's a simple concept. I'm not gonna take much of your time today. We've already been here for 15 minutes. I think that kind of gets the point across. It might sound too simple, like, okay, well, duh, sure. But this really is transforming. And no matter what genre of literature you approach, there are different ways to kind of take that in. So being familiar with the different components of a journal article is really important. The abstract, conclusion, tables, methodology, different types of paper have different subjects or different, they're arranged a bit differently and, and different things that they cover. A journal article is very helpful when they have nicely laid out. I've seen some pretty badly laid out ones. Those are hard to read. Uh, when they're nicely laid out like this in some bold terms, it just helps your eye go straight to where it needs to go. Any questions at all? I will finish with a pitch to you to reach out if you ever need help. There is no shame at all in needing help. Sometimes you will be assigned assignments or projects, the type of which you've never done before and you might not know what to do, that's okay. We truly are here for you. I mean that when I say it, it sounds cliche, but it's true. If you ever need help with anything academically, reach out to us. If you go to the library's website, click get help, schedule an appointment. More people are taking advantage of this, by the way, which is really good. You can select a librarian a day, a time that works for you, continue, put your name, email a little bit about what you need help with, and you can use us, abuse us, you know, take our time. Um, these even default to 30 minutes, but you can go shorter or longer as you need. We are here for you. So if there's anything strange that pops up that you need to do, just let us know and we're here for you. Yep, I see it I, now that I finally get around to opening the chat. Are you going to post this to YouTube? Um, yes, yes, we are. I, every one of these research success series sessions we're going to post for YouTube and to our LibGuides, which I'll point out to you, our YouTube channel. You just access there, YouTube. The LibGuides, if you don't know that we have these, these are very helpful. If you click Subject Guides, for every subject that you can study here at Tarleton, we have put together guides for you. If you go to Articles, hand-selected databases that are great to search for that topic, other resources, citations for that style, APA, MLA, whatever it is. This is just a good starting place to go for whatever you're researching, but we will make the YouTube videos available on our research resources libguide. How do I conduct research? What's that process all about? Good information on that here. The research success series videos are right here. <laughs>